Hi there, uh, my name is Sadie Wenzel and for my Queer Theory Museum um, proposal, I wanted to do what are called, or I guess nicknamed Beefcake Magazines. Um, this background here on the screen is just all examples of what you would see on the cover or inside of a Beefcake Magazine. So I guess a brief history um, would be, these were created and used between the 1930s and the 1960s. Um, they still existed after the 1960s, but not really for the intended purposes and I'll get into that later. Um, one of the best examples of a beefcake magazine is Physique Pictorial. Um, it was one of the first really popular. Um, and I guess if you're not familiar with the term beefcake magazine, um, they were first made as um, a magazine marketed for health and fitness of men. So it was supposed to just to be a magazine that showed the prime examples of men and male health and uh, what they should strive towards basically is what they marketed as, as um and though they were marketed as health and fitness magazines um for a fitness crowd anyone into bodybuilding um sometimes even women the main market for these magazines was gay men and as you can probably guess why um bunch of naked men in a magazine but one of the biggest reasons it was um, the primary market for them was gay men was because during this time, it was highly illegal for males to engage in homosexual activity, including porn, any homosexual graphic material, any images of male nudity, any videos of male nudity, um, and any engagement in actual homosexual activity was illegal and you could be punished and tried for it. So uh, they didn't, that community, um, LGBTQ plus had basically zero opportunities. Um, unlike, you know, heterosexual people, heterosexual people, though it wasn't encouraged to read porn or look at pornographic images or engage in salacious behavior, it wasn't exactly condemned and it wasn't illegal. Um, so that's my first push towards our queer theory um, is the stigmatism towards homosexual activity and the homosexual community and the queer community just in general. Um, for so long, the norm, um, the box of correctness in our society was heteronormative activity. So heterosexual, um, cisgendered, one particular family stereotype was the only accepted form of public being. Um, and this kind of pretense that it was marketed towards just fitness and health continued all the way until the 1960s. And in the 1960s was when um, pornographic images and homosexual activity was legalized. Um, not to say it was like accepted and, you know, encouraged but it was no longer illegal to create homosexual pornographic material. Um, and at the bottom there, I have some examples um, and both these images on the screen here, let me move this so you can see those properly. Um, both these examples on the screen to the left and the right there are pictures of the beginning of Beefcake magazines when it was primarily and marketed towards health and fitness. So at the very beginning, that's what they strive to do. They just strive to put those pictures 
of just um, bodybuilding poses and stuff on and in the magazines. But towards the end and when it became a highly, highly popular thing for the homosexual community to have, um, they became more salacious. And the men and young men and people in these magazines were presented in more sexual um, poses, uh, clothing choices, things like that. Um, like this example, it's kind of blurry because it was so stretched out. Um, but that one is one of the popular magazines, Adonis. Um, you'll hear pictorial physique um, and Adonis a lot. Uh, those were two of the more popular ones. Um, and he's not technically posed in a bodybuilder type pose. He's not the perfect picture of what a bodybuilder um, stereotypically should be. Um, he's more posed in a casual, almost sexual way um, with sexual motivations behind the picture because it's an older copy. Um, and I just put some examples of some of the full-size magazines and pocket-size magazines on there just so you could see how popular and how many there were. Um, it's such a regular thing in society to have pornographic material and sexual magazines and pictures um, and material that relates and is specified for your sexual orientation, um, but the heteronormative community um, said that was wrong. So we listened. Um, and so this slide, is a more introduction into when they really started to become sexual. Um, in the beginning, 1930 to 1950, they were mainly about physical health and the body. Whereas we get into these um, 101 boys art, mainly is one of the biggest ones. They were really just aimed towards pornographic material. Um, but legally, you couldn't say it was pornographic material. There could be no full frontal nudity. There could be no sexually explicit images or else there would be a lawsuit, legal problems. One of the bigger magazines had that problem and they um, got shut down and decontinued because of that. So it's a lot of back-facing, side-facing, hinting images. Um, and they were really important to the homosexual community. Um, and that's why I put here hidden advocacy at its finest because for as much as homosexuality was condemned in the early 19, mid 1900s, it was common and regular and it's not a choice a uh, man cannot just be like you know i'm gonna break the law and i'm gonna be homosexual now so he had to find a way to legally live his life so therefore these magazines were created and quite a few of these magazines were not directly related to um, advocacy or the legalization of gay rights or pornographic material, but they did lead the charge. One of the websites I, um, I got a lot of information from was a, um, let's see if I can share this with you. It is, um, it's a long history of physique magazines um, by Jesse Monteguado. Um, and he does give a lot of history, but he also gives like a personal statement, a testament to how helpful and um, righteous these magazines were in life. Um, by the time I came out of the closet, the physique magazines were a thing of the past, 1973. Um, and that is because after the legalization of gay porn, they fell out of popularization because 
gay porn was started to be produced in a regular capacity. So there were magazines that were specifically aimed towards pornographic material and um, you didn't have to be covert about it anymore because there was no longer legal action that could come upon you. Um, let's see. Um, physique magazines face constant attacks from government censors. That's one thing I could talk about in queer theory. Uh, we try to censor so often what we think is abnormal. So even if it's not directly related to the thing that we think is bad or wrong, um, we try to censor it and push it away. Um, and we do that with so many things. We do it with religion, lifestyles, um, and here it's sexual preference. Sexual preference comes up a lot when we try to do those things. Um, and even though there was a lot of pushback from government, when these physique magazines or beefcake magazines were just um, shown as physical, magazines there's nothing the government could actually do unless full frontal nudity was in play um i was not the only gay man whose life was transformed by the beefcake magazines this paragraph shows exactly why things like beef magazines are so important to queer culture um if there's nothing representative of yourself, if there's nothing you can release yourself or identify with, then more often than not, you're just gonna deny yourself because then it's optimally wrong. Um, everyone's saying it, everyone's enacting it. There's nothing to go against those words. Therefore, it must be true. Um, the Exponential expansion of physical culture constitutes the most significant gay cultural achievement during the formative quarter century following World War II. It's basically saying that these were so important because there was nothing else like them before this happened. Um, yeah, and by the 1960s, Drum and Vector openly gay magazines emerged and they no longer had to hide behind the facade of beefcake magazines. Um, and then there's this LGBTQ info on wiki.org. This is the other one I got a lot of information from. These were my only sources, but these are the two main ones. Um, yeah, uh, this is where I got the list of magazines from. Um, yeah, and it, it just allowed people to self-express. Um, in a way. So it allowed people to go from no identification in media or culture to seeing, oh, I like this. Oh, other people like this. Oh, it's okay because other people have it. I'm not the only one. These people are advocating for my rights. These people are leading a surge into the legalization of the things I like. So it must be okay. Therefore, creating an open communication and culture in which we can grow from. So if queer theory is all about identifying the things that push the limits or the things that limit um, cultures and ideas and lifestyles, then Beefcake magazines were one of those things that really pushed the limits and allowed people to explore self-discovery. Um, and that's why I think these magazines are really important and should be um, introduced into our queer museum. Thank you.